funny how I imagined that I would be that person now. Start it out, start it out. Nobody saw it. Nobody saw it. The train was kind of a deep pattern. Maybe I've just forgotten how. You know, relax, get a drink, and I'll tell you everything. That I'm not exactly the person that I thought I'd be. I'll literally just be a minute. of logic. We are researching a cutting-edge new area. Module 2. Eric wants to buy an Xbox. Eric doesn't feel he can afford this Xbox. Have you ever had a menstrual cycle in your life? And then Eric would, we expect, reply with the answer no, that he has not ever had a period in his life because he does not have the correct organs. The average age which women start to menstruate is known to be 13. Eric is now 51. We would then make a simple calculation. The average price of sanitary towels, which women have to spend, is known to be three pounds a month. Years here of existence without bleeding, and we end up with approximately 1,300 pounds. We would issue him with a hypothetical credit, which is definitely enough money for an Xbox. Why should I be looking at this? We like to think of ourselves as two people with a third brain. The best bit of my brain, the best bit of her brain, creates this electronic, creative monster third brain. We like going to Zenith and Ned and yeah, both Leos we are. Yeah, that's our star sign. I think that's what's got us to where we are. She's got to yeah. be very, very dedicated and powerful driven. to get where we are. We're very driven. <clears throat> so driven. So what happens to the brain during a ghosting incident? Ghosting is such a distressing ordeal that top clinical scientists have begun to research a new condition known as ghosting triggered delusional thinking. That's G D G T. The mobile telephony stimulus triggers a firing of synapses in the frontal FOMO lobe, resulting in obsessive technological checking syndrome and the acute delusional thinking we've been seeing here. Well, thanks for that, science. And now let's go back and to yet, Ellie. And yet, one of the most serious side effects is that the friends of the ghoster can themselves, in time, slowly begin to contract ghosting triggered delusional thinking by proxy. I've got it. Maybe he's come home, realised his phone battery's flat, gone into his bedroom, put it on charge, and then gone back to the kitchen and realised he's hungry, so he made some chilli and tacos. It's got so absorbed in that, and the chilli's on the stove, and then he's realised he's out of cumin powder. So he's gone down the shops, then realised that he'd forgotten his keys, goes back to get him, but can't get inside because it's burning to the ground with the chilli. But he can't even call the fire brigade because his phone is on charge in the bedroom. Meanwhile, your message has come in, but it won't ever get read because it's gone up in smoke like everything else in his life. Yeah. I got the face! You got face? Yes! He's seen it! I got the dot dot dot! A lady 
sits on a bench on her own. Two joggers walk by. A man stands on the corner of the street with a bunch of flowers, and he's checking his watch. And a policeman is uh, directing traffic. Um, and there's a, there's a lollipop lady. New iPhone 6. Get your new iPhone 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 New iPhone Stopped. Patrick Swayze, baby. There he is. Two o'clock. Eyes on suspect. Get him! Let's go. Byron! Byron! Excuse me, Byron, we're, we're, excuse Byron, me. We're, we're from the TV show Ghost of Us does Byron. What are you looking at? I think I might have the seafood linguine. Yeah. I think I'm gonna go for the burger and chips. Oh, I do feel a bit like chips. You can get yourself a side as well. Uh, sorry, I'll just have one of yours. My client would like to define the term one of yours. Is that literally one chip or as many of my client's chips as you feel like? I'm not discussing this without my annoyer present. My client would like more than one chip. I see. But my client also makes the point that your client at some point will look at her prawns and say those look good. As such, we would like to negotiate a preemptive FOMO clause. Mm -hmm. Can we then agree on, say, a nominal amount of chips? Maybe five chips for one prawn? My client suggests ten chips for one prawn. My client would settle on eight. Mm -hmm. With this clause about the crunchy ones. Ah, yes, that's a stipulation that none of the chips that you take from his plate will be crunchy. I like the crunchy ones. Mm. No more than 50% of the chips my client takes will be crunchy. My client can abide by that. Anything for dessert? 